The Snapshots Music and Arts Foundation presents a conversation with Tabitha Soren on her history at MTV. Part 1. It seems that there was a certain looseness to MTV's live production. The live production always is because, you know, anything goes with that. So, yes, that was looser and, and probably more full of mistakes or misspeaking than the scripted teleprompter stuff. But in the studio, it was definitely from the teleprompter. But it was, Kurt and I would write what we were going to say. I mean, we, people would give us their scripts and then we would rewrite it in our own sort of conversational style. That, I think, probably made it seem very casual. The other thing was Kurt and I were incredibly comfortable with each other. He you know, never was competitive with me at all. And acted really as a mentor when he could have been so easily irritated that they were, you know, making him sort of share the spotlight with me. That put everyone at ease, I think. And then, you know, honestly, we had less at, less at stake than the, the networks and CNN. We didn't have as many viewers. We didn't have as many advertising dollars, and we weren't owned by... I mean, I guess we were owned by Viacom, but they, I, I didn't feel like they ever messed with us, not the way GE had an influence over... NBC. So, uh, you know, the, the pressures were not as grown up. What was your approach to preparing and working with different artists? I mean, at the time, these were the most famous uh, musicians in the world. It depends how big an interview and how much time I was going to have with them. I can remember things about uh, music so much better than everything else. You know, I can't find my keys, but I can tell you who the keyboardist was for the band, yes, band I didn't even really like in, you know, 1982. My ability to recall music minutia is kind of uncanny, and that was one of the joys of working at MTV because all this useful stuff was actually finally useful. And frankly, the other joy of working at MTV was I was surrounded by people with the same problem. There was hardly, uh, hardly deep research because most of our brains and our souls were just filled with this stuff and everybody had a little area of expertise. So when I went to interview Tupac, I was not somebody who listened to his music that much, but I knew exactly who would know, you know, whether he was left-handed or right-handed and where he was born and, you know, we had somebody there who just knew all that off the top of his head. I mean, certainly facts were checked, but if we would mine each other's brains for uh, the information we needed for a story. So that was one, a- one aspect of the research. The second aspect was, I think at the time, they were called nexus searches. So if they sent me to Bosnia and I needed to refresh my memory of all the backstory on Yugoslavia um, until World War One, then somebody, a production assistant or an associate producer would probably put together a notebook for me. Definitely notebooks were handed to me at the Video Music Awards and I was expected to possibly talk to 30 or 40 artists in a period of three hours and you never knew exactly which ones. Um, you never knew how much time you had so there were these little bullet points of you know, kind of a cheat sheet of what they were working on now and um, you know, maybe funny facts about them so that you could ad-lib more um, informationally, not just, you know, being goofy. I was never, I never had a lot of strength in terms of just being a personality. There were DJs who did that very well, but I, I definitely was much more comfortable talking about a story that happened or some sort of information outside myself rather than just having my personality carry the segment. I was trying to go out and get original material as well, um, but I certainly didn't do that just for the, you know, the, the little newscast that interspersed the day. Probably the biggest event that many remember was the death of Kurt Cobain. What was that experience like to be involved with that? Certainly for MTV viewers, it was, you know, a very emotional event. But um, if you take it, I think I was working for NBC at the time as well. So I know we did, NBC did a story on it as well. I was actually in Seattle when it happened doing a story for an NBC magazine show. So I was there already. So I did double duty for both of them. Anyone shooting themselves is horrible. It was horrible because uh, the, I loved their music. I was acutely aware of him being a troubled individual. So I wasn't extremely surprised, but then you had to go be sort of a vulture on the scene that way. I didn't have a lot of experience doing that. That was uncomfortable. 
hanging around for a couple of days outside Courtney and Francis's house in Seattle with all of the mourners and the the kids who were crying and it look that was the worst. That was not why I got into journalism. I would have rather have just been upset by myself, but I couldn't really escape it because I was already in Seattle. I, I think that MTV did a good job covering that, but I didn't actually enjoy the process. Many see that event as a symbolic turning point, and then of course the music industry and bands changed quite a bit after that. That's true. MTV made a, a conscious change to shift from traditional music to more reality TV-based programming. Do you have some personal thoughts to share on this transition at the network? You know, I wish we were all so prescient as to see that that was going to shift the focus of the network or it was going to be as popular. And I certainly didn't expect the real world to uh, chain course of television outside of MTV or even within MTV. I, to this day, never watched a whole episode. I certainly know about it. I they did not shoot it where we were located, so it's not like I was running into members of the real world in the hallway or anything like that. Everything starts as an experiment at MTV, even the political coverage did. I thought it was a clever idea. Personally, now, I can't believe that people aren't saturated with the stuff and, and just done. I can't believe television has not moved on from reality TV. I can't believe anyone who's actually watched series of of reality TV would ever in a million years sign up to be on one. It just seems like a guaranteed train wreck in your life. No no happiness comes of it whatsoever. I'm just continually shocked by Americans' willingness to debase themselves in front of the public just to be on TV and have 15 minutes of fame. It's shocking. Obviously, my opinion is very much in the minority. I'm completely out of sync with reality TV. I, I didn't have strong feelings about it when Re Real World started because it just seemed like this lark. And um, I thought, wow, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. I'm glad I'm not in an apartment with people I don't know. You know, that sounds horrible, but might make good television. For me, the real world seems like, wow, you know, they're going to have to wait for a long time for things that are interesting to happen. Um, and I guess... You know, whether you decided that they actually anything interesting happened during the real world is very subjective. Continue to part two.